Welcome back to part two of this tutorial in which we're now going to add in the mobile controls to the thumbstick. Now, if you've done anything before with moving objects around on the screen and controlling them with a joystick or a game controller or arrow keys or whatever, you'll be familiar with the Unity's input manager. Back in Unity, if we go to uh, Edit, Project Settings, Input, you'll find what are called these axes. And these axes are different named uh, values that allow you to program how something is going to behave and map it to different keys. So in this case, by default, the input has a horizontal movement or whatever you'd like to call it using the left and right arrow keys as well as the A and the D keys on the keyboard and that's going to in the case of our car rotate the car for um, horizontal movement with the vertical movement it's moving the car backwards and forwards with down and up and S and W now we can create what are called virtual axes. So rather than setting them up, up in here now, you can create them at runtime. And that's what we're going to do with our car. So we're going to create a virtual axis in the network server UE code. So open up that code and we will define a horizontal and vertical ones. These will then obtain messages from the client which will allow us to control our car. By creating these virtual axes the drive code will automatically pick them up because that's the way it's been written. So the first thing you need to do at the top here is to add these lines of code. First you're declaring two virtual axes, one that's horizontal and one that's going to be vertical. Now they also need a name or a string. And as you saw before in the project settings, uh, there's ones called horizontal and vertical. And we will use exactly the same ones. These names here have to be the same ones that are used in the get axis in that drive script. So if we just quickly open up that drive script and have a look, the drive is going to do translations with vertical axis and rotations with the horizontal axis. So the way this is spelt, as I said, has to be exactly the same as in here because these are connecting each other essentially. Next, we're going to set these axes up inside the start before we make our server. So up here, we'll add this code and you can see that the horizontal and the vertical axes are being set or created here using the names that we've assigned for each. Now at the same time, we're registering the virtual axes with the cross-platform input manager, which will allow them to um, listen for their commands coming through to them. We then need to set the server up to listen for these um, commands coming through from the client. So we need to be able to receive messages. And in order to do that, we also need a function to run when the message comes through. So just under start, we're going to create a new function called server receive message. And it's going to receive a network message called message in this case. The message structure itself has to be the same on the client as the server. Now there's a nice message structure that's already built in called a string message. And that's why at the top of our program, we've had to include this library here so that we can use that message structure. You can create your own custom message structures, but we're not going to go into that here. With that message uh, now created and coming through, what we're doing is we're setting the message that comes through from the client into essentially into this function and giving it to our local variable that's in here. And then we're pulling it apart. So we're pulling out the contents of the message that comes through. Now, what I'm going to do with this message is, as you'll see in a moment, there's going to be two parts. There's going to be a change in the X direction of the controller and a change in the Y direction of the controller. And I'm putting them into the same message and splitting them or dividing them up with this pipe character. 
So by the time the message comes to here, it's two floating values separated by this pipe. And so this line here is splitting that apart and putting one into the horizontal axis and one into the vertical axis as the update value. Now this server receive message function is something that we've written ourselves and it's not going to run automatically when a message comes through. What you need to do with your network server is to register a listener for that message coming through and you have to do that with pretty much anything if you want to be able to get network events to run your own function. So underneath here, once the server has started up or we have a server object, we can register a handler function with that server. This line I'm putting in now is the register handler and it's going to register our server receive message. So this is the name we've made up for our function. It just means that whenever this server receives a message that has a number of 888, it's going to run this here. So it's linking it to our code. You're probably wondering where this 888 comes from. Each message type that you send back and forward between the client and the server needs to have its own ID number. Uh, this is just plucked out of the air, basically. Uh, there are a set number of messages, there's about, I think, 15 of them. If you use a number greater than that in your code, then you're going to be all right. So we're just using 888. Now this 888 needs to be referenced in the client when the client goes to send the message so that it links everything together. Right, so that's the server code, save that. Go back into Unity and we're going back to our controller script because now we need to make changes to the network client UI. The client has to send the message through to the server and you can do that by adding another function and we'll add that under here and it's called set joystick info. So this is our own named function. We're going to call this function from the joystick code and that's why we needed to put the joystick code up into the assets with this particular code so that it could reference it and know that it existed to stop you getting a error. And the joystick's going to send through our H delta, which is our change in X direction, and our V delta, which is a change in Y direction of the joystick itself, those values will be then sent or packaged up in a message and sent from the client to the server. So inside of here, we're first of all testing that the client is connected. Otherwise, we'll get an error if we try and send it a message. Before we go any further, in order to use is connected on the client, the client must be declared as static. So at the top of your code where you've created your network client, make sure that you put a static modifier in front of that to enable to use this is connected or you will get a compilation error. Then back inside set joystick info, we're using the same structure as the message that the server is expecting. We're using a string message, creating that and then packing it up. So the value of that has got the H delta plus the pipe character that we're looking for in the server and then the V delta value. And then that whole message is being passed through or sent to the server with the code 888. So this is where we've stamped the message with our ID number that we've just plucked out of the air. Uh, so there's the message. Now we need to finish this off by calling this function here from inside that joystick code. So let's close that and open up the joystick. And you're looking down through this code. This is the existing code. We're looking for update virtual axis. And in here is when the virtual axes obviously get updated because that's what it's called. Uh, when you are dragging that um, thumbstick controller around on the screen, it's changing the X and the Y values of it and getting the change in those values are what is sent to the vertical axes in this case. And you can see them 
here being updated. We want this to update also on the server and we can do that by sending our values, our delta change values that are used on the horizontal and vertical to our corresponding ones that are on the server. And we've already written our send joystick info and I've got the code here just uncommented. Let me put it back in. You will want to add this line of code, which is running that send joystick info and sending through these two values that are being used in the client for updating the virtual axis. They will then come through to the server and the server will use those because they've got the cross platform input and it's receiving the message, which is then injecting them into the controller. So add that in, save it. And once you've done that, it's time to go ahead and build it back out again, building out the controller to the mobile device and leaving the game in the editor. And there you have it, a simple controller that is on your mobile device and networked to your machine. Now that you've got those basic structures with the server and the client set up between the two devices, you can send any messages you like. Help support the Holistic 3D YouTube channel by subscribing. And if you're interested in learning more about Unity networking, there's a coupon code just for you in the text below.